This is Maha Kumbaha Pishkin, a Hindu temple ritual of consecration that only takes place every 12 years. It's a time to reset the energy of the temple. It's estimated 12 to 15,000 devotees will visit here during the next five days. Kumbaha Bishkam literally means pouring the sacred water over the Vikras or deities and the tower tops or gopram of the temple itself. Colorful traditional clothing is everywhere. Lavish silk and hand embroidered dresses. The aroma of curry and vegetables is layered between the smell of incense, burnt offerings, and the sound of Sanskrit verses recited over a loudspeaker. There is an electricity and excitement in the air, and for a minute, I almost forgot. I'm still in St. Louis. As a chef, I need to stay curious in order to evolve. For me, that means looking beyond a good meal to learn more about who made it and what inspires them to cook. La comida es amor. Every great city has great food. I'm going on a journey around the world, right here in St. Louis. I'm on a quest to find passionate chefs who cooks from the heart. It's exciting. And I think it's the best. To prove that food is love. And it's gonna be delicious. Food is love. Love your food. If I've learned anything over the last few years is that St. Louis is a diverse city. In my travels, I have met people from all corners of the world that own businesses and call St. Louis their home. From Bosnian to Italian and Mexican, the influence of the immigrant cultures has put the food scene here on the map. I would humbly submit that I have become well versed in the subject of immigrants and food in St. Louis. And I will also humbly admit I had no idea why one of the highest numbers of foreign-born populations in St. Louis are Indian. This is an exciting revelation to me. I've always been fascinated with Indian cooking. It's a layer of the St. Louis cake I can't wait to dig into. So how deep does Indian food and culture go in St. Louis? I've enlisted my friend, private chef and menu consultant, Ashok Nagaswan, AKA the food raconteur, to show me what I've been missing. This morning, I'm meeting him at the Hindu temple of St. Louis for the Maha Kumbaha Pishkin and helping to guide us along Long today is Ashok's friend and pillar in the Indian community, Ram Lakshmanan. I'm not sure what I'm in for. I know that I'm in good hands with these two. For me, the celebration is a good way to see many aspects of Indian culture. They offer ghee, rice, and uh, other, you know, nine grains yeah. into the fire. So they are building the fire right now, and it's done in a certain sequence, ordered sequence. And that's what the prayers are all about. At each point, they will start offering things inside. There will be priests sitting around the fire and offering it. For everyone's well-being that they pray. So they're not just praying for themselves. They're praying for everybody. Because we are all God's children. Yeah. Regardless of whatever faith you may follow, or even if you are an atheist, we are still God's children. The climax of this five-day event is when the tower tops are cleaned and placed back on the temple. Very graciously, these guys have asked if I would like to take part of this process. It's such a great honor to be asked to help with such an important part. It's got things inside too. <laughs> so what is, what's inside? It's filled with, with like mustard seeds and some um, all the five uh, metals inside them. They have like uh, this is made of five metals: like gold, silver, zinc, brass, and uh, copper. So this is made with that, and it is all filled with so much stuff that is auspicious to Hindu culture and then it is installed up, up there so round the clock if you want to uh, pray to the God. Traditional Indian clothing isn't something you can find in a department store but here during the celebration you can find whatever you're looking for. It's a generation of weavers who do it for um, hundreds of years then they just live and survive purely just by that then some of the sarees are like I mean even seven, eight thousand dollars also then, single salary. Some of them take few months to prepare. There is a story almost, it's like a thing in the border. Many of them have different styles and you'll see them. This Each is one is like a different grade. one. This is from a different region. region. So yeah. you'll see the feel of it is like different. Hand-woven silk fabrics with beautiful embellishments and jewelry. 
and even henna tattoos, which apparently are popular at Indian weddings. In, during weddings, this is one of the function. Yep. It's called Mehendi function. Can you, can you get it all, anywhere on your body or is yes. it? Yeah. Downstairs, these guys are making a drink from sugar cane. Yep. They normally, they do instead of a ginger juice, they pound a little bit of ginger and put in there so you feel a little bit of uh, the chunks yeah. of the ginger in there. When did you come? to this country. 2012. 2012. Just like any other immigrants, you know, we like to try to find some of the culture we left behind, right? It is. It's like to an extent, it's like we do yeah. that in, I mean, food is one of the ways. It's like we yeah. do that. And then we have these sort of social gatherings. Yeah. Uh, we do that way. But again, it's like the idea is like to just blend seamlessly in the country you just entered, uh, yet not forgetting the roots. That's all it is, that yeah. I believe. So even the, some of the food or the dishes it's, uh, we do, there is an Indian twist to that then, very subtle Indian twist to that then, to explain people about the benefits or the history in a way that people can connect and understand it better.